In this video, I'm gonna show you how to raw edge applique with hand embroidery. So this way, you're gonna have to be okay with raw edge, which I always am, especially when you're making a lot of dressed in plates. Um, and we wanna start this off the same way as most of the other methods, is to decide how big we want this. And I've already decided that I love this little shape right here. But you may want a bigger face on yours and that's fine too. So just kind of play with your templates that you have. You could have actual ruler templates or you could just pick up things from around the house and use those as well. I've decided that I want this on here to, for this embroidery method. And the reason I want this is because it's it's almost a, a solid, you know, it, it's a, a very um, a non busy fabric blender. So it's going to really show off my stitches. Unlike um, the raw edge methods where we use a, a backing for the fabric to keep it, you know, sturdy, we're not going to do that because we're going to be using our, just our hands and our, our, just some hand stitches to keep everything down. So you're not going to need that um, extra stuff. Plus, if you put that on the back of your fabric before you start hand stitching, you're going to have a hard time getting the needle in and out. So I want to flip my fabric to the back and I'm just going to put this down. I'm just going to trace the bowl and then I can um, cut my circle out. And I'm going to um, place my circle right there in the center. I want to make sure that there's plenty of space between the edge of the bottom edge of my blades and my circle top. So I'm, I'm, you know, getting everything in there and there's not gonna be, we wouldn't want a situation like that to happen. So just be extra cautious about where you're placing this. And because I'm doing hand stitching, I don't wanna put any glue on it. And I'm going in and out of the centers. So I'm just going to um, just put a pin in it. I don't really like to use pins like this, but in this case, I'm gonna need them. In embroidery, they tend to get stuck, you know, in my thread and needle, but we'll have to work around it. Um, for embroidery, I use um, number eight DMC. Um, it's a nice thick thread, so it shows up really well, um, but you also don't have to pull those strings from your regular embroidery floss. I'm not a fan of embroidery floss. Um, and I also like to use um, a sashiko. Sashiko, I'm not sure how to say it. I like to use this needle with my number eight thread because I don't have to struggle getting the thick thread into a tiny eye. Um, it is a little bit of a bigger needle. It's thicker too, so some people don't like um, uh, bigger needles running through their fabric, which um, I'll let you decide if it's for you. Also, you may want an embroidery hoop, and I, I do like embroidery hoops, um, especially when I'm doing something like this because I feel like it helps me. But if you're working on a flat surface, you may, you may go for no embroidery hoop, which is fine too. If you are working with an embroidery hoop, you just want to take it out. You'll put the bottom part, the one that doesn't have the clasp, you'll put it on the bottom. You'll load your, your piece that you're working on on top of it. And then the part with the clasp, you'll just place right here. And you'll just use this little screw to get it where it needs to be. When you've got it, you want to make sure everything's taut and then you'll screw it into place. Well, even using, I'm using this because I think, I feel like it will help me move, maneuver around better. But normally I would have this, if I'm doing regular embroidery, I would have this piece um, in the hoop instead of this larger one. But um, since it's such a small thing and I don't have, and I need to be able to see what I'm doing, I'm using a larger hoop. Um, they usually say to cut an arm's length of thread, but the more you do this, the more you get to know what you like better. And I always say, just go um, do, do it how you like to do it. Mine might be a, just a little bit hair bigger than my arm. You wanna tie a knot in the bottom of your thread, just a simple, basic knot, and then you're gonna do that one more time. Ideally, the knots are gonna go right on top of each other, so you may have to move your little hoop down to where the knot is when you pull it and make a little bit of a thicker knot. Put your thimble on. It should be pretty easy to get this thread into this needle. First, you wanna have a plan, and my plan is just to meet in the middle and then have all of my strands going out like this. So I'm gonna go right in the middle first, I think. So I'm going in from the bottom and I'm pulling until my knot catches. I'm gonna use my Dresden's as my guide to go towards. I'm showing you today is just a back stitch 
So I'll take my needle back into back into the um, fabric and then I pull it out from the back. And then I'm gonna come back up a few, just a hair but above. You can determine the, the length of your stitches, but shorter stitches are easier and looks better when you're doing around curves, but this, this um, straight stitch isn't gonna to matter too much. I'm gonna put my needle right back into this stitch right here. And then pull it back out. And then we just kind of keep going, just like this. So I'm gonna just be quiet and let you watch me and I'll show you how far I'm gonna go with this. So I've gone about two stitches off of my center and that's the way I'm gonna do it all the way around. Um, so here's what it looks like on the opposite side, just like that. And I want to bring up my needle on this other blade because I'm gonna go back into my center. And that's the way I'm gonna continue, going out, over, back, and then I'm gonna do that the whole way around. So I would come in about right here and then just start going back towards the center. So you don't wanna wait until you're out of thread. I've got maybe, maybe six, seven inches of thread on my needle but you don't wanna wait until you're out. So you wanna have some wiggle room. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put, you're gonna, you're, on your last stitch that you're gonna do, you'll put it back through towards the back. You're gonna flip this over, take your needle, run it through a line of your stitches, and then pull it all the way through and give it, you know, not a, not a hard tug because you don't wanna mess with the tension of your thread, but just a, you know, a good tug. Then send it back through. And then you're gonna make this little loop, you'll put your needle through your loop and you'll knot off. And then you wanna do that one more time. And then you'll cut the thread, maybe half an inch, just like that. And it kind of just came right out in the middle right there. So prepare another piece of thread and go through those same motions of knotting it twice and then loading it on your needle. All right, and then you will act like you're going right back into that same stitch you left off at. So in my case, I'm doing my back stitch. So I'm gonna come right in about right there, pull to my knot catches, and then go right back in where I would have gone. When you get finished with your piece, that's the exact same way that you will tie off as done. So I will get this completed up and then I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. So I finished the embroidery. I'm just gonna take this off of here. And then I'll get it pressed up. So this is a bit detailed, so I would definitely save this for smaller projects or just making something extra special maybe. Um, if I was doing a whole quilt of dresses, I doubt I'd 
go through so much trouble, but if I've got, you know, maybe six Dresdens on a quilt, um, this is when I would really um, think about doing something like this. One thing to think about when I finish this in a quilt top and I'm going to start quilting my quilt to finish it, I'm definitely going to dip in here with my machine quilting because I just want to, you know, double secure these little edges right here. Or if I don't, I mean, it'd probably be fine like this, but I just want to do some little extra stuff. So when I machine quilt, I'll probably go right in here just like this, just to give it a little bit of extra security. The texture that something like this adds is so great. I mean, it just feels absolutely amazing. Um, so that is just one method of embroidering that I wanted to show you today on a Dresden plate. You could definitely do something completely different. You could have a whole bunch of French knots all over these. Um, there's just no end to what you could do. This is just one thought. So I hope you enjoyed this video.